Welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara Chatelaine from allbrands.com. We're a family owned and operated business since 1976. We are so, so happy that you're here. Uh, we have a very special guest, Reen Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden. And Kelly, could you bring up that uh, project that we're going to be doing today to just to show everybody? And yes, this is it. We're going to be using the Brother My Design Center, which is similar to Baby Lock's, I believe, IQ Designer. And we're going to create this design in the machine today and show you how, how this is done. It's so, so gorgeous. So yeah, um, so that and we also have some announcements. But before we get to that, let's say hey to a few folks in the comments. Hey, Sandy, good to see you. Nancy from Los Angeles, I love your picture. Carolyn from Texas. Uh, Steve from California, whoop. Karen from Ohio. <laughs> Nancy from Florida, all over. Southwest Louisiana, whoop, whoop. Hey, Judy, hey, Rosemary. Oh, we have such an exciting announcement. Rosemary's gonna be with us at the Houston International Quilt Festival this year. Uh, that's October 28th through the 31st. And guess who else is gonna be there? Reen with us on the stage, Carrie. Karen and Carrie, chat. Carrie's in the <laughs> chat. You're welcome to come. I invited you through Reen. I hope so that she extended that invite to you. And Becky Thompson's gonna be there. We're so super stoked. Melissa from Montana, Brenda from Michigan. Oh my gosh. So be sure to give us some likes, comments, and shares because at the end of this video, of course, like every video, we're going to give away a $100 allbrands.com e-gift card and good luck. I hope that you win. Uh, I have one more announcement. We have a very special financing promotion through Brother that's going on right now now so if you have if you don't have a machine with my design center that we're going to show today they have 60 months zero percent financing on any brother machine purchase over five thousand from now through the 28th so i hope you take advantage of that and without further ado we're going to bring in the fun the fabulous the amazing reen will coxon hi everyone hey, <laughs> welcome hi, to the show Oh gosh. I oh. just made it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's always fun. <laughs> so Reen, why don't you so Reen, we, we were like five minutes before the show and Reen texts me. She says there's a cement truck on my cable line. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, what's happening? Um I'm glad yeah, it worked we're out. <laughs> they I mean they just got the cement truck out. Like, I mean, what did you say? 40 seconds to go? Yeah. <laughs> the cable line gets plugged in and boom, we're here. <laughs> That's the joy of the show. Oh my gosh. We have 167 folks watching right now and they're all sending you tons and tons of love. And yeah. So are you excited about Houston? Yes, I am. I'm ready to get out and about. <laughs> yes, me too. It's like the floodgates are opening. Everything's so exciting. And we're going to be having um, a virtual aspect of it too. So you can join in more ways than one. So yeah, Reen, I have my machine here with me today and I'm going to be following along. Do you want to give everybody kind of an overview of supplies they might need? Like if they want to just grab it real quick. Sure. So basically we're going to be building this block in my design center. And what's kind of different about this block is if you can see, and I'm gonna to try to give you a view, this center part, this flower and these little petals on all four corners, they're raised up. So this is kind of like trapunto, could be kind of a mock trapunto, but trapunto means that it's raised up. So the flower here is raised and every one of these little petals along the um, sides are raised up. And we're gonna build this block all in my design center using, um, I'm sorry, using my design center on the brother machine. And yeah, if you have IQ designer, you can do it in there too. But we're gonna build it, it's gonna be easy. And if you got the machine and you're sitting by it, you could follow along and um, make this too. You do need, you know, I have regular um, warm and natural batting, okay. cotton fabric. And I actually you looked at it so i have this too so just batting regular batting right warm right. and natural 
That's what I mm -hmm. have. It's like a high loft batting, right? You need a high loft batting. And, you know, I mean, I don't know, this is maybe, I don't know, three quarters of an inch thick. It's the cool. poly batting. Mm -hmm. So you need that because that's what's going to give the design the loft. And um, your thread. Uh, you do no need. Show? Was it no show stabilizer, two pieces? Right. I put it on no show stabilizer. I just use one layer. Um, let's see. Oh, and then when we are actually doing the stitching, you are going to need a that film, uh, plastic film topper that's made for machine embroidery. Because when we have this big high loft batting underneath our needle, the needle, the tip of it will tend to, um, you know, get caught in all this little fluff. So we put that over to make it nice and smooth so the needle doesn't get caught in anything. But after that, that's that's all we need. Some little scissors to trim with. That's it. I'm so excited to get started. <laughs> are, are we ready to, um, I think Roberta's asking, yes, this is recorded. So you can um, go back to All Brands Facebook page and watch it over and over again. Yeah. Anytime it says the All Brands show, rewatch for life. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, are we ready to go over to the machine? I think so. Let's All right, do let me, it. Let me get my camera changed here. Okay. While you're switching it over, uh, is that wash away or heat away topper? I think you're just going to cut it away, right? Right. We are just going to cut it away. It's um, so either one. Whatever so you got. If I had some here, maybe I'll get up and grab some in a minute. But it's just that, um, like you put over on a towel when you're doing a towel, uh -huh. you know, to keep the pile down because we want to keep this um, high loft batting. We want to yeah. control that when we start the stitch. So the hoop size, since we're using, guys, um, the My Design Center, you can totally be creative and make your own design, I'm sure, in this. This is just a suggested one that Reen's making, but I, she has the 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths square hoop for the brother xp2 luminaire but you can use right. any any size hoop right right that's what's so great about this design that you get to be the designer so if you don't want um my block is going to end up being about nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and if you want a eight by eight block you can make that you want a six by six block you can make that it, it's your choice you can make it at any size you want it to be yeah. You're just going to make all the inside elements smaller to fit into your um, your block. If you have a dime magnetic snap hoop, that works too. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes, it does. <laughs> all right. So this is the machines turned on. Here's my design center. We have to go into there. Um, so like I said, I am going to do a, a nine and a quarter inch block. So I've got my mouse hooked up. And let me just get it over here so you can you see my mouse moving around. That's just because I don't want to get my hand in the way all the time. There's going to be a few times where I am going to stick my hand in front of the screen. But to um, do the most of it, I'm going to be using my mouse. All right. So to start the block, we need a shape. And I'm going to use a square. And this is the shapes button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it opens up a whole bunch of shapes. You can do all kinds of things. There's fancier shapes, there's open shapes, there's all kinds of things, but we're going to stick with the basic shape for right so, now. So, we're going to make you full screen, but I'm going to be following along on my end too. All right? Great. Cool. Let me know if uh, you, uh, I need to go over something else again with you. Okay. Okay, so here's the square. We're going to pick the square, and I'm going to hit OK down here in the bottom. Now, as you see up here, this is a line property. Um, these buttons right here, these uh, five buttons are for lines. These uh, six but I'm sorry, five buttons down here are for the fills. We're going to do all of our fills later. What we're going to do first is we're going to build the entire block. But what it does is it defaults to a zigzag. And I actually don't want this outline to show. I don't want it to stitch at all. So I'm going to go into... Let me go back there because I think I clicked too fast. We're going to click on the line property and I'm going to choose no sew. I don't want this line to actually sew. What I wanted to do is I'm making a boundary and you'll see that in just a second here. So let me click OK. I have to click the bucket that's under the line property and then click the line, the, the box 
to um, make it no so. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I go to put my fill in, if I don't, the fill will fill up the entire screen and I only want it to fill up my block. Um, another thing we have to do is I have to size the block. So if you didn't already size it first, you can always go back down here is the little um, trace button. And I can just draw a box around what I want to work with. And now you see that it turned red. That means I can work with it. The size button is now um, lit up. So I did want to change this to be nine and a quarter. So I'm going to use this top button here. Let me move my hand out of the way. If I use my finger on this, it goes quicker than if I click with the mouse. So that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to get it to be nine and a quarter inches square. And sometimes it's, here it goes. I think my hands are sweaty today. I got so nervous when uh, the dump uh, concrete truck was on my cable. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. We're gonna get nine and a quarter. Letting us All know, right everybody's letting <laughs> us know in the comments what, what the weather's like in their uh, neck of the woods. Oh, it's hot here today. Those guys were hustling out there and sweating like crazy. <laughs> yeah, Donna is in Florida. It's raining. <laughs> okay, now I finally got to nine and a quarter. So that's what I wanted to do. This is the outside of my block. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK. Now, I said we're going to build the block. So what we're going to be doing, if we look at the sample, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this fancy block inside. Then I'm going to start doing the flower and then I'm going to start doing the petals in the center. We're going to get all that um, put in before we start doing any kind of stitching. So let's go back to the shapes. Now to find that fancy shape, it's under this icon that looks like a little flag. And there it is right there. That's the one I used. I don't know what you call that shape, but that's what I used. Hit OK. And it brings it in. And you can see the red box around it. That means we are, can edit it. And I do want to resize that. And I want to bring that up to, um, let's see, eight and a half inches wide. So the bottom number is the width. This uh, little shape, it's not really a, um, a square. You know, you can tell by the numbers here going. And eight and a half, almost there. One, one upgrade I would love to see on the machine is for you to be able to type in the numbers. I think that would be really cool. All right, so I've sized this to the size that I want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit okay. The next thing I wanna create is that flower that I put here in the center. Again, that's just another shape. And that one is this flower right here. I used it, um, the one that's got all the little petals on it. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm going to size that one to be um, six and a half. So it comes in basically at 6.49. That's great. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit OK. And now I want to copy and paste this flower because it, let's look at our sample again. You can see that I have one, two, three, um, three of those in there actually. So if I hit um, copy and paste, which is right here. If you may not have seen that, but when it copied and pasted it, it kind of moved it off diagonally, just a tad. So I'm going to resize it. But what I want to do first is put it in the center. And then this little circle here is what will put it back into the center for me because I want all my elements centered. So now that I got it in the center, I'm going to size this one down to be five and a quarter inches. So let's get that down to five and a quarter. And again, if I touch it, it'll probably go quicker. I'm, I'm curious to see how many people are following along on their machines. So I got it five and a quarter, so I'm gonna hit okay. I want another one of those flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit copy paste again. You can see it brought it in another one and slightly moved it over. I'm going to hit size. 
I want it to go back in the center. So I'm going to hit the little circle. And this one, I want to size down to four and a quarter. So if I hit the button here, the, the sizing button, I'm using my finger and we'll go down to four and a quarter. There we go. So you can see now how we're building um, this, the elements in the little block. Then we're going to apply all the fills and our stitches to it. The next thing I want to do is bring in the circle. So I'm going to hit OK to get out of the screen. Go back to the shapes. Here's the circle. And I'm going to hit OK. We need to size that circle. And this circle, I want it to be sized to two and th uh, three quarters, 2.75. So I got to go pretty far down with it. Oops, went a little bit too far. Okay, so now it's 2.75, and we can see there's our size right there at the top. I want another circle, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to hit size. I'm going to bring it right back to that center again, and I'm going to size this one down to two inches. So let me just hit the button here, get down to two inches. All right. Now you see all that we really have left to do as an element are these little, I, I'm just gonna call these things petals that are in each of the four corners. And that happens to be a built-in shape. So let's hit okay. Let's go to the shapes. And that one is in the second category. And it's right here. So I selected it and I'm gonna hit okay. There it is on the screen. This one has to be sized. And what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna size it so that it's two and a half inches wide. And the bottom number is the width. So I'm gonna hit the, um, the button, that's the icon here that's gonna resize it all, but I'm only watching that bottom number. I wanted to get down to 2.5. Whoops. Let me get back down to 2.5. And I'm only watching the bottom number because I I'm, I'm want the width to be two and a half. All right, so there it is. It's two and a half inches wide. Now to get it up here in this corner right here, um, I'm going to hit OK to get out of this screen because I want to rotate it. And I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. And there is no 45 on here, but if I hit the 10 four times, 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the one five times, one, two, three, four, five. You'll see right up here, it says 45 degrees. And there it is rotated 45. And now I'm gonna shoot it up into this corner using this little arrow key here. And let me go ahead and if I just touch it, it'll go quicker. And it's kind of like, you know, you eyeball it and you get it to where you want it to be by using these two corner um, icons. Get it placed where you want it. And when you like it, you know, that's, that's good where you want it to be. I'm gonna hit OK. And I'm gonna hit Copy Paste again because I want another one. I'm gonna go to the Rotate because we're gonna have to rotate it, but I wanna put it back in the center because I like everything centered. And this time I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to use this icon down here and shoot it off into this bottom corner. And again, you're going to look at it and get it exactly where you want it. And I kind of like that. And you can also zoom in here um, to, you know, kind of get a better, closer look. Or you can also go into your settings button up here and turn on the background grid. And what that will do is, you know, say this point of this little leaf uh, petal here hit a certain line. Well, then you can make sure that the one down there did too. So you can either eyeball it or you can use the grid to help you line things up a little bit better. We still need two more to go in these other corners. So I'm going to copy paste that one, go to rotate, throw it in the middle, and I'm going to rotate it 90. And this time we're going to shoot it down into this corner. So let me just use this um, 
other little corner arrow here and get it right where I want it. How you doing, Barbara? Oh, we're doing good. You know, I'm following along and I'm trying to read the comments and respond at the same time. <laughs> But um, <laughs> um, it's it's okay because I can come back and rewatch this. That's um, right. It's going a little qu it's quick, but it's just really cool how fast you can make these designs in the machine. It's it amazing. is. I mean, you can really do a lot. And right now we're still building. We haven't got to do all the fills and the lines and everything. So now I have this little pedal where I want it. So I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to copy paste and get another one. Go to rotate, put it up there in the center, rotate it 90 degrees again, and then use this top arrow here to shoot it up into this corner. And let's see, I'm just eyeballing it to get it where I want it to be. So now we've, we've built all of our elements. We've built everything in the design that we're gonna be using here. And now here you can kind of see it a little bit better. Again, all of these lines, let me just clear out of the screen here. All of these lines are no sew. They're not sewing. It's almost as if I'm drawing this in the software first. So this is our basic block. And since we've done all this work, we need to save this block. So if you click memory, you can save to your machine or you can save to a USB. Personally, I always save to USB. You don't have to, you can save to your machine. That's just my personal choice. So let's go back to this block here, the finished one. So what we need to create to make this area raised and all these little petals raised, because if you, I'm gonna try to turn it sideways here to see if you can get a better view of, to see the loft on this area here and these petals. To do that, we need a tack down stitch. So we're gonna create that right now. So the parts that we're gonna actually tack down with our high loft batting are gonna be all these petals and this outer um, flower, this outer ring of the flower only. Those are the only parts that we need um, to, for our tack down for our high loft batting. So let's go ahead now and we are going to change our line property. And on this one, I used a double run. So I'm going to change to double run. And let's go ahead and make this pink so you'll be able to uh, see that. Doesn't matter what color you use. I'm gonna hit okay. I have to click the bucket here because that's how you're going to apply it. All right, so I wanted the outer petal of the flower. Did you see that turn pink when I touched it? And I'm gonna to have to go through now and I'm gonna to touch each one of these, um, these little outer petals. And that is making these actually be stitches. And this is what's gonna tack down my high loft batting when we get ready to sew. So I've got that done. I want to save that. So I'm going to go back into my memory. I'm going to hit my USB because that's where I save things. And I've saved this. And you should always save your work because you don't want to have to go back and recreate everything again. So always save. Hey, Reen. Yeah. I think that we should email everyone that pre-registered for this class. Um, that saved file so that they can access it as well. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, so if you haven't done so yet, there is a pre-registration link at the in the description of this video. If you haven't filled that out and got the email to join live today, fill that out and um, at the end of the day, I'll send you this design uh, so that you can complete it. So what we're doing, what we're saving right now are um, files that can only be read by my design center. These files that we're saving right now, they are called, um, these are PHC files. Or no, I'm sorry, these are PM9 files. And they can be read by my design center. Once we advance some more and save, 
then they turn into other files that like brothers um uh, pe design can read or your luminaire can read etc so we've created our tack down let's just go ahead and hit next and see it shows you exactly what's going to be stitching in this step and those are all the tack downs i'm going to hit set this is telling us that it's converting what is shown on the screen to stitches and that we're going to leave my design center and if that's okay we're going to say okay so we are in the embroidery side of the machine right now you can see down here it says embroidery but we're not going to stitch this out yet we still have to build the rest of the design we're just bringing this over so now we're going to hit add so we can get back over into my design center that is actually that's the first step of our design when we get ready to stitch it so let's go back to my design center and we're going to bring in we're going to go back to memory and the memory to retrieve something is up here it's this little bitty pocket with the arrow so i'm going to click that i have my stuff on the usb stick when you ever you save to usb it makes a b pocket and that's where all of your files are in so if i click the b pocket here is that first one that I did. Remember, this is no so. And there's that second one I did that is the tack down. We're gonna go back to the file that um, there is no so, no sewing to it. It is just basically as if I drew it. So I selected it, I'm gonna hit okay. And now we're back where actually we had first started. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna start assigning all of these pretty stitches to the background. You can see I have a background fill here. I have a very tiny, tiny stipple um, kind of behind the flowers and in between these petals. We have a candle wick stitch going around the fancy block, a candle wick going around the um, outer petal of the flower. I've got one on the inner uh, circle. We've got another motive stitch on the inner, uh, innermost circle. And these are triple stitches, all that, that look like running stitches. They're actually triple stitches. So now is when we're going to put all of that into our block and it's important too that you save this because let's say you put a stipple in here all the way around and you want to stitch it out again but you don't want a stipple there you want one of those other fancy stitches there you want a different fill that you um put out here this is where this file comes in very handy you don't have to recreate it <laughs> so that's why it's a good idea to save it hey rain we have yeah. a question and I'm following along too, but um, I'm definitely going to have to rewatch and download that file. Um, the question was from Donna and she asks, do you have to save each as a separate file or are you overwriting the file, the save file as you go? What's her question? It, it's not going to override it. It's got, each one you save is going to be saved and it's going to be in the, um, you know, if you put it in the memory of your machine, let's say you, you created the fancy block and then you saved, then you're just saving the fancy block. You came back and you added the flower here and you saved. Well, then you got the fancy block and the flower saved. Plus you got your fancy block that you saved prior. So it doesn't erase the one that you, you know, when you save one, it just keeps adding. Got it. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Good question. That was, that was a really good question. So now we're going to go and we're going to put in our fills. So let's start with these background areas here. So this is our fill. This is how we access all of our fills. There's a big red um, square and then this little fill pattern here. So we click on that. This first one it defaults to, that is a fill. I mean, that is solid embroidery, which we do not want. This is a stipple and we're gonna use that stipple later. But if you click on the very last one, a new menu opens up and then here, are a bunch of really pretty fills and if you have the luminaire and you have the upgrade kit two you're going to have 42. i'm not sure what the upgrade kit one had or what the machine actually um came with because i've you know i've gotten all the upgrades because i love it but um so depending on you know what you have in your machine will determine which fill that you pick I went down and I picked fill number 40. It kind of looks like a, I don't know, almost like a basket weave sort of thing to me, but I'm going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to click OK. And let's change it to green just so we can see it change. It doesn't matter what color I pick. 
I could pick any color. I just chose green because I think it might show up well on the screen. We do have to click the bucket, the one that's underneath the fill. We're using the fill, so we click the bucket under the fill. And now I'm gonna click just this background area. I'm clicking between my big outer square and my fancy block. And it applied that fill. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get all of our elements in, all of our fancy stitching in. Then we're gonna go back and we're gonna edit our fancy stitching. So it's gonna be kind of cool. So now we wanna fill in, I wanna get all this stipple that goes in the background. So let's go back to our fills. Here's the stipple. I'm gonna leave it green because it doesn't really matter. The bucket is selected, which is what I want. And now I'm gonna click between the flower and the fancy block and fill that area in. Looking kind of cool, isn't it? I think so. Lorraine says, oh my goodness, that is completely awesome. <laughs> you just wait, Lorraine. You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> so now we got to go in and we got to do all the lines in our flower and our little petals. So we're doing lines. So we're going to go up to the line properties. And what I'm going to do is let's work with that candle wick first. So let me click the candle wick. And I'm gonna just change it to purple. Maybe you'll be able to see purple well. I'm gonna hit okay. So the areas that I want to be candle wick are the fancy block, so I'm gonna click it. Now you're not gonna see the candle wick appear on there yet. I know that you saw the background fills appear, but when we click the lines, you're not gonna see the actual stitching until we get to the next screen. So let me make sure I clicked on it. And that's telling me that I did click on that line. Whoops, I'm sorry. I don't have the bucket selected. That's a problem. So you select the bucket, then you click the line. And you probably saw it get a little bit darker. The next thing that I wanted candle wick on is, let's see, that big outer um, flower. So let me click that. And I can't, it's hard for me to see. Okay. Yep, there I go. I got it. When you hear that knock, knock, that means you've already clicked on it. And I've got the inner circle. I'm sorry, this, the outer circle of the two, this one here that I'm going to put candle wick on. Okay, got that. And the other ones that are going to be like these petal outlines and these two inner flowers, those are going to be a triple stitch. So here's my triple stitch. Click that. Click OK. And I am going to have to go back and click on each one of these little um, petals here. And there we go. If I miss one, I can change it in the next screen. But I'm just going to I'm clicking on each one of these petals, the three petals in all the corners. And let's see, I believe I got all those. And these two inner um, flower petals, I had those as a triple stitch on my sample. But that doesn't mean you have to. You can make them whatever you want them to be. So the last thing to get in there is this stitch here that's going around the inner circle. It's kind of a neat looking stitch, especially when it's uh, sewn out. To get to that, we go back to the line properties. And if we hit this very last button here, first, let's go over the line properties. It's a zigzag. This is the single run, but it's actually stitches a double run, triple stitch, candle wick, chain stitch, blanket stitch, V stitch, and these are the motives. And you click it, and then we have a new window that opens. And this is the um, number five, zero, zero, 005 is the motive that I used on that um, inner circle. I'm leaving the color the same, I'm gonna click OK, make sure that bucket is uh, selected, and I'm gonna click on that inner circle. There we go, I got it. So now I've applied everything, and we're gonna go to the next screen, and this is where we can change everything, we can edit things. It's thinking right now, it's gotta generate all these stitches. So look how it, um, 
it put in, these are the real stitches, how it's actually going to stitch. This is your preview window up here. It's telling you right now what we can change. Green. So, yeah. Can I just say, this is absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it? I'm amazed. Well, you are and, awesome. Well, we're still, it's, it's the machine, Bob, that's doing this. <laughs> This is gorgeous. I love my design. This is why Brother is the best my design center. Hands it down. Is. <laughs> so we're going to go through each one of these things because I can see that I didn't get the candle wick here. I actually got that other stitch there. But the window up here, your preview window, is showing what you can work with right now. So it's showing me that it's this background. So what I actually did on my background was I changed the size, and this is the size button. And I brought it down to 65%. And the size, so I'm going to hit OK. It's thinking. Every time you see those blue dots spinning around the machine, it's recalculating stitches. It's thinking. All right. So you can see now I've got more of these lines in the background because I brought them closer together. Hey, Reen. Yeah. Kathy says, it's like magic. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> and we do have one question. Let's see, Lorraine. Reen, does it make a difference the order you select your stitches in? Good question. The, uh, you mean what we're doing right now? And no, it doesn't. We're going to go through, we're going to use this, these arrows here, and we're going to toggle through this whole design and change things. But the preview window is showing you right now what we're, what we're working with. So it showed the background, so I'm going to do the background first. Nancy's being funny. She said, I wish I had a circle of blue dots when I was thinking. <laughs> 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 Me too. <laughs> okay, so we changed the size. And on mine, I changed the angle. I think I wanted it. What did I do? I put it at a 45. So there's 45. Whoops. My mouse is kind of double clicking on me a little bit. So I'm changing the direction. I'm going to put it at a 45. So what that's going to do after we hit OK, and there's those dots, it's thinking. It's actually, instead of being at an angle, it's going to be going straight up and down now. So you can see in the background, it changed it to go straight up and down. I kind of thought that looked like a little lattice, so that's why I chose that. The next button is a background. I'm sorry, an outline, and we don't want another outline to stitch, so it's turned off. This is a skew button, and what it will do, the skew icon will kind of take those lines and will skew them, <laughs> but I don't want them skewed. This is an offset. It will make the lines um, change the distance between the lines vertically and horizontally. I'm leaving that alone, but this button down here, I love this one that they added. Right now, everything in here stitches at default. I'm sorry, at um, triple stitch, the, the background fills, not the you know candle wick or anything, but these backgrounds, these fills are triple stitched. And I don't want mine to be triple stitched. I want it to be a single run. So you pick the one that's over here on the right-hand side, and that makes it a single run. Machine's got to think because it's got to recalculate the stitches. We're not really going to see a change in our design because it's just changing, you know, how many times it's, it's running. So that's what I did for this background. This background is going around the whole fancy block. If I click the arrow here, whoops, and my mouse is, my mouse is kind of clicking fast. I need to adjust it. But now you can see we get to the stipple. So the stipple is inside the fancy block between the flower and the fancy block. So what I did here is I like a really tight stipple. And on my sample, if you can see that, I don't know, but my stipple is very, very tiny and very close together. I really like that look. And what it also does, it helps to really push that batting, that warm and natural down and make your high loft batting stand up a little bit higher. So... Um, I'm going to change that stipple and I'm going to leave it here. This is, um, let me just click on it for you. That's the run pitch. That's like the length of the stitch. I don't want to change the length of the stitch. Whoops. But what I want to do is I want to change the spacing on it. And I'm going to bring the spacing down all the way 
to it can't go any lower. And I think that's going to be like 0 0.8, 0 0.080. And I'm going to hit OK. The machine's thinking because now it's making a bunch more stipples, bringing them closer together and tighter. And I'm not going to change anything else. You can see how little that stipple got there. So I'm done working with those two fills. So if I click the arrow over, it's showing the candle wick. Um, actually, it looks like I got, I hit something and I got a little dot in there. Let me, um, let's see. That's just a little boo-boo. But now if you saw the red box, if you can see it, it's going around the entire fancy block. So that means I'm working with the entire fancy block. Right now it's showing a triple stitch. I wanted that to be a candle wick. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna choose the candle wick, hit okay. And it's gotta think again, but it will actually show you that candle wick going around. Did you see that change there? And my candle wick, all I changed on it was the spacing. And that's how close together your little candle wicks become. And I brought it down to 0.24. Um, I'm sorry, 0 0.024. And that's just going to make my candle wicks be a little bit closer. If you don't bring it down, the, the higher the number is, you'll see a little like dash line of thread between each one. And I didn't want to see that. So I'm going to hit OK. It's got to think because now it's moving those little candle wicks closer together how I wanted them to be. And there we go. And let's go to the next. Um, let's see. It's hard for me to see which. OK, so right now we're on one of these little petals and that's a triple stitch and that's what I wanted it to be. Now it's going through all the little petals, those little petals in the corner. There's this one. Now we got to the machine determines this. Okay, it determines the order when I click the arrow to what it wants to go to. That was supposed to be a triple stitch like it is. It, what it's showing me right now is that um, middle flower outline. Um, it's showing another leaf over here. That's what that's supposed to be it's showing the inner um, petal. That's supposed to be a triple stitch. And we can tell because that's the triple stitch symbol. Okay, now these little dots right here, I didn't want that, those on this particular line. Oh, wait. <laughs> hey, Rain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to take over the whole screen, but we had a good question that brought me into something um, that I want to talk about. Is that okay? Yeah. Just real quick. We're, we're going down a little barber rat, rabbit hole. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Gail, good question. Where do you learn what all of these? buttons do? That's a fabulous question. And I have a fabulous answer for you. It is this amazing Brother XP2 playbook that just came out. It's so like, it's heavy. It's big. Oh my gosh. And it takes you through step-by-step -step tutorials on different, um, on different projects. And it shows you all of the buttons to use. And guess what? If you're local to allbrands.com right now, if you purchase the XP2, this book is included. Um, yeah. So it's just a fabulous, fabulous resource to have. And um, this will really, really um, get you to where you need to be and uh, give you some ideas to be more creative. Right. Yeah. The, the books are the playbooks are full of projects that will kind of take you through different things and show you different things. And of course, you have a manual and, you, you know, a built in manual, too, that will, you know, you can look things up. I don't read the manual. I watch yeah. your videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's tons of uh, videos on All Brands Facebook page that show you all kinds of things. Yeah. So the this outer circle here is selected. I didn't want that to be this mode of stitch. I had that being a candle wick. So I just went back to the line properties. Here's the candle wick chosen. Click OK. It's thinking again, and it's going to apply that on there. Okay, and you can see it changed that there. Now we're here with these, um, I don't even know what you'd call those. It looks, it looks like a straight line with a little dot on the end. It's a very cute stitch. 
But if you look closely, they're pointing towards the inside. I had mine pointing towards the outside. You look at my sample, see them here, that's this, they're pointing outward, going all the way around. So we can change that because there is a flip button that allows you to have them pointing in if that's what you want, or have them pointing out. And that button is right here. And all I'm gonna do is flip them, hit okay. Got to think, because now it's flipping those stitches for us. While it's thinking, we had a really yeah. good question uh, <laughs> from one of our live watchers. Patty, what if you forget to create a stitch line and deco stitch the wavy box? Can you go back? If you forget to, oh, you mean, say I forgot to put in uh, the, the flower outline? Yeah. Um, you know, you can go back. It, you better save your work. That's why we, we saved our work. Mm -hmm. You know, you may want to um, go back right now. Right now, honestly, I can't say if I hit the return screen, I don't want to lose everything that I've done, but I could go into memory and I could put this into memory, which right now I've done everything that I want to do. Everything, my block is exactly how I want it to be. So I am going to save it. Click memory. I put my stuff always on a smart script. thing to do. <laughs> yes, you always want to um, save. You always want to save. So you know what? Let's look at this return button. I've saved it. So let's see what happens if I return. I'm back to um, where I can go back to the screen and I can apply something, or I can bring in a shape. So let's say I forgot to put in that flower, big flower shape. Here it is. I can just click on it click OK and bring it back in if I wanted to. So yeah, you can come in here and you can manipulate. You can erase things you don't want. and um, It's wonderful. It, yeah. <laughs> we went down another little rabbit hole. That was a really good question. Here's another one. Uh, right. Did you put a tack down stitch in the very beginning from Cindy? No, I'm not going to use a tack down stitch. And when we get to, um, but you could. If you wanted to, you could. We have a tack down that's for our high loft batting. That was that very first thing. It's still there. We're getting back to that like right now here in, in a second. But um, that's the only tack down. I'm not going to tack my fabric down if that's what you mean. But if you wanted to, you certainly could. You could, um, you know, add a big square with a running stitch going around the entire block if you wanted to. So, okay, let's get back to this. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see. Let me go next here. Since I saved mine, I'm seeing what the machine's doing, if it saved any of that stuff that I did. Yes, look at that. Everything is saved exactly as I had, um, you know, just done it. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click set. I have saved this. Save your work. Remember, it's saying that it's going to make it into an embroidery design. We're leaving my design center and that's OK. So I'm going to hit OK. And then now here I am in the um, embroidery screen. So now here is our tack down to get that high loft batting. And then here is our block that's going to stitch. We're ready to go to embroidery and stitch this baby out. Reen, this is stunningly beautiful. Oh my gosh. Someone said Trapunto on steroids. Oh, <laughs> absolutely stunning. I mean, this, this says it's taking going to take 36 minutes to stitch out. And I did not, um, you know, I didn't prepare to stitch it only because, um, you know, I didn't know how much time we were going to have to uh, stitch this out. So, but Barbara... <laughs> has some step-by-step -step photos that I sent her of me stitching it out so we can go over and talk about how it does stitch. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask Callie to bring up the slide one. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I've hooped my stabilizer and what I used was um, like cutaway, the lightweight cutaway, that no-show mesh. Um, All Brands has the exquisite brand, which is the brand that I love to use. So you hoop that and I just put a piece of, um, Warm and natural batting over the top. 
All one. right. So, so number two. So that is my high loft batting. And if you can kind of see, it's about, uh, I'm going to say at least three quarters of an inch thick. It's that polyester batting, you know, it looks kind of fuzzy, whatever, but that's what you use. And we can go to the next one. And then here's where I've used the film, that plastic film, um, like a Solvi that you put over top of towels to hold the nap down because I guess this high loft polyester bedding, it kind of has a nap, meaning that your needle, the tip of it, as it moves around would get caught in that. So that's why we put that on top. And I did pin it down and I pinned through all layers. I pinned through the topper, the batting, the stabilizer to hold that in place. Because if you have this hoop, and I think the next slide might show it. Okay, there's where that first step was stitched. That's my tack down. And if you go to the next slide, okay, I've trimmed it now. So it tacked it all down, those areas that are going to be raised up that are gonna have trapunto, we'll call it, underneath them. And I had to trim around those. Now, those little bitty petals, they were kind of a little booger to trim around, but you can see that I did it. <laughs> and in that photo, it still has the water top uh, soluble stabilizer on top. I left it on there because when you go trimming around there, it's much easier if you leave that on there while you trim. So, the, so how the many of you have an amazing pair of small scissors that you love? Let us know in the comments. I'm currently, I have my Karen K. Buckley scissors, um, and they're, they're phenomenal. Yeah, you do want something small and sharp. And we do to, have a question, um, Reen. Um, okay. Can you insert a color stop to use multiple colors from Marilyn? Yes. You can, when you are going through and you are clicking on everything, applying your stitches and your colors, just change the color. That's all you have to do is change the color. We'll, after we go through this, I'll go, show you my screen one more time. My design basically had three steps and even I stitched it all out in one color. You can stitch it in whatever colors you want, but the three steps were the tack down for the high loft batting. Then it does the background stitches and that's that um, little tiny stipple and the background behind the fancy block that I have. And then it does um, all of the inner um, stitches, all those fancy stitches on the inside, the line properties. That kind of is, the machine will kind of, you know, tell you what it's gonna stitch. So, but we also have, um, I'm gonna show you something uh, maybe in a minute here on the machine, but let's get back to this. So you can see how puffed up that is. See how high that high loft batting is. So let's go to the next screen. I take that off. You're going to take off that water soluble. And this is showing it. The water soluble is pulled off of all these areas. The next screen will show the fabric that I'm using. I use kind of a light green and I pinned it down because is this, this stuff the right is slide? the center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've pinned my fabric down because you don't want it to shift. You have a big bubble right there in the middle of your hoop with that high loft batting. Um, you know, I wouldn't suggest taping. Again, what I did was I pinned. I pinned the top two. I put those top two pins in through everything, through all layers, smoothed my fabric down, and put the two bottom pins in through all the layers. Wow. The next screen is going to show that's all the background stitching that's stitched. And so it didn't stitch anywhere where that high loft batting is yet. So you can see it really pushed it down. So you can see that that um, center flower there and those little petals on the side are really starting to stand up. And then basically there it is finished. Oh my gosh, it's so stunning. It's so stunning. Oh my goodness. And can you imagine this is just one block. You can like be so creative and make a whole quilt out of this or a pillow or what would what would you make this like? What would you? I use think this? it would be nice to make a quilt, maybe a little table runner. You know, I'm more of a yeah. instant gratification. I would start with a table runner probably <laughs> first. But yeah, you could go in and you can make all your blocks different. You know, use a different shape. If you have the machine, what I suggest is open up my design center, 
start looking around and start looking mm -hmm. around at all the different shapes in there and start creating. I mean, it's, it's just so much fun. And the sky's the limit with my design center, which is why I love it so much. It's so it unique, is. so amazing. Uh, Sharon says, would you put a canvas board and frame it? Good idea, Sharon. That's a great idea. Or you can even just make a block and, you know, put some, I didn't put any backing on mine, but you know, you could put a piece on and you could um, bind it and it could just be like a little candle mat or a table topper kind of thing. Yeah. And we have, this isn't the only machine that has my design center on it. We have the Brother Stellaire XE1 is the embroidery only version. So if you have a sewing machine you love, just get that one. Uh, the XJ1 Stellaire is the sewing and embroidery machine combination. And those are the two like, um, I guess, entry level price that you can start out to get into the uh, my design center. And then we have the XP2 and then the new 10 needle, um, the multi needle embroidery machine has has that too. So on any of those. Right. machines. <laughs> okay, uh, Callie says we got a question from Pam. Do you adjust the level of the foot when doing Trapunto? Okay, that's a great question because I did have a couple of tips. If you find that the needle of your foot is really starting to drag, you can adjust the height of it. And I would probably go up a click. You know, you have to go into the settings of the machine, but you know, you can do that. Just remember, you got to put it back down to default because it won't go back on its own. Yeah. And then you'll have flagging like crazy on your yeah, and, it's, <laughs> <not good. laughs> and another right. tip is to slow your machine down, you know, a little bit. Just because you're, I mean, it's puffed up in your hoop, you know, that batting is. So you can slow it down maybe to, you know, six, seven hundred, something like that. And remember to slow your machine down in embroidery mode, you got to go into the settings. That little slider bar, that's for sewing. Let's see. I can probably show it. Uh, well, that's okay. We don't have time for that. But yeah, it's in the I, settings. <laughs> right. But um, right. other than that, you know, you don't need any special needle or anything you just stitch it out that's phenomenal hey rain you have uh p design 11 right yes do you think it would be okay if you put that design in brother p design 11 digitizing software and wrote it does that writes to all formats right yes you can take your your when you've cl completed your block and you are over in the embroidery side if you save the file there, it's a PH, PHX file. And that can be brought into Brother Software. And you can manipulate it further if you want. You could even build this block in my design center if you had it and you know had the knowledge of using you know the software, you could build blocks in that too. Yeah, I had a good suggestion. Uh, can you resize it to like a five by seven? Oh, five by seven, you're getting pretty, pretty tiny. Um, okay. Maybe a six you know, by ten. Yeah, a six by six block, you know, would yeah. probably be nice. But yeah, resizing it, to resize it, honestly, you can, you know, you either build a new block in my design center, or you're going to have to have PE design because PE design is really the only software that's going to read a PHX file. Yeah, because it's a brother product and you could yeah. resize, you know, in that. OK, Callie, do we have any more questions? Uh, and y'all, Callie's in the background. So say hey to her. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> Carla was wondering, um, Carla has this okay. question. OK, so Carla says, so I understand how you build sections, but how do you do the tack down steps separately? OK, so remember when we first brought the first block in and if we have time, I can go real quick to the machine because I saved all that. Yeah, Please. sure. Okay, so let me get oh. the camera changed. Yeah. And you know, that's one reason why you want to save. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do the $100 Albertus.com gift card giveaway. So get your comments in while she's showing this. And then as soon as she's done, we're going to give away our $100 gift card. All right, so I'm just getting out of this and I'm going to go back to my design center. And here's memory. Thank goodness we saved our design in the B pocket. This was our design that we first brought in. Remember, I mean, that we first built. This was just as if we drew it. To get those tack downs in, 
I went to the line properties. I chose a double run. I'm going to just change the color to like red so you can see it a little bit better. You have to click the bucket. And now I'm clicking the areas that I want to be tacked down. And that was the outer row of the flower. And each one of these little, um, uh, what do you call them? I'm calling them petals here. And I'm just clicking on each one of them and I'm applying that line and that's what's gonna be my tack down. You can save that or what you can also do is I just go to next. It's gonna, there's our, all of our tack downs. I hit set, go, I'm going to the embroidery machine and there's my very first step. Hit add, go back to my design center, grab your block that you made again and that's where you start, um, you know, filling in, filling in all your different stitches. So that's how easy that is to do. It's this so one, easy. Oh, it's, it's so <laughs> easy. So easy to, mm -hmm. I don't remember the last part of the words. That's Brother's theme song for their It's So Easy TV show that you've been yeah. on because yeah. you're a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> one other thing I want to show real quick is I did a different block, and this one is a B. This one, how I created this one, I actually used the scanning mat. I took my artwork, I used the scanning mat, scanned it in, and created it that way. So maybe that's another Facebook Live. <laughs> Yay! We'd love to have you back on the show again. You're definitely going to be on the show when we're at Houston. And uh, I hope that you guys come see us there. It's going to be awesome. It's so going to be so, so great. Thank you, Reen. So just to remind you. you, don't forget, we have 60 months 0% financing on all these machines that uh, have my design center in our stores in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So, and... Um, Houston, Texas, San Antonio, Texas. Let's just bring up the stores. That's where they are. We'll just make it easy for you. Okay, so now back to the screen and we're gonna do our $100 gift card giveaway. Let's do it, drum roll. Yeah. Roberta Thompson, congratulations. Congrats. You won. <laughs> so Roberta, to claim your prize, events at allbrands.com. Email me there and I will email you your $100 gift card. Thank you so much for watching and thank you everyone for watching the show. It's always a pleasure to sit down and do creative things and so and I'm I, I didn't get through the project because I was just watching the whole time but I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna email that design out to everybody um, and uh, or you, I mean you should go through the steps really but rewatch it and you pause it and replay it for as long as you like. Um, so thank you so much, Reen. You were so phenomenal. Well, thanks, Barbara. I appreciate you having me on. And, you know, give my best to all your family. Miss them so much. Yeah. Yeah, we can't wait to see you. And we'll all be at Houston. Uh, my brother, Robert, uh, my brother, John, and my father, uh, John. Yeah, we're so excited to see you there. Cindy's asking when we're going to be in Houston. Uh, it's October 28th through the 31st at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll let you get to your pool because um, I know it's getting hot outside. I'm sure it's going to be super refreshing and you deserve it. Well, the pool's not done yet. That was, they were pouring the concrete to do something. I, well, however they build a pool, but I was just glad that cement truck got off the cable line <laughs> in time today. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and we love you so much. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.